It was an unusual experience because we were dealing with a man who had never done television before, strictly movies. And only because of the name value I had with Hee Haw and other things I did, I was able to uh, communicate with his son, Michael Way, who just passed away about a year ago, died of cancer. And when I called Mike, Mike said, he said, Sam, you know, my dad works for $500,000. Well, that's, in, in those days, that was unheard of. And that was his movie rig, incidentally, and he was living in Newport Beach. So I said, I think that this concept that we have, and it was a, a, a script that was written by uh, a writer that used to produce The Laugh-In Show, uh, his name escapes me at the moment. It was a patriotic thing. In fact, he was a scriptwriter for President Nixon. He used to write Nixon's speeches. And um, he came to our, our operation, our company, and wanted to do it as a joint venture, and this came about. So my peers said, you know, the Wayne family and my wife, through her her, her uh, relatives uh, all went to the same Catholic school and Catholic church that the Wayne family kids did. So that's how this whole thing gelled. So I said, well, let me talk to, <laughs> let me talk to uh, NBC and let, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was CBS. Let me talk to CBS and let's see if we can arrange some kind of a, a, an overscale payment. Well, instead of calling CBS, because I was connected with CBS, I called uh, Budweiser Beer. And a friend of mine by the name of Gene Petrillo out of Chicago, I called him. I said, uh, you know, I think if you come in on this thing, I can get John Wayne. He said, oh, you're not going to get the man. He's strictly movies. So we can do it. So Budweiser said, let us call CBS. I said, I already did. So we were pl playing both ends to the middle. Everybody thought we'd never get John Wayne, but Michael was sharp enough to see to it that with the guarantee of the 500,000, his dad came on board. And it was a difficult production because uh, we used to, in those days, use cue, cue cards. We didn't, uh, he was accustomed to teleprompter that we'd use in the movie. So we had to run a dual system. It was a traveling show. It was done in Huckleberry Farm. It was done in, up in uh, Northern California, it was several places. Sam Goldwyn Studio it was done all over. And it was tied in with the Bicentennial for 1976. In fact, I was asked about this the other day since I was one of the production people. Uh, if there was a way we could get that on DVD, and I said, I really don't know because they associated me with that show. So now that I'm home, I'm going to check into it. But uh, <clears throat> John, was a, he, he knew what he wanted. He was a very strong union-minded person. Uh, he supported all the guilds. He wanted to be sure that I was doing it the right way. Uh, he didn't want to go through the script that much. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Sometimes it, it pays off if the principal knows the entire script. All he wanted to do, tomorrow I'm going to be where? Just read that section to me and I'll memorize that and do that part. That was it. And so we had to learn to pace the situation. But it was a great experience for me and certainly uh, I met some wonderful people. Uh, the highlight of that were two people that certainly stand out in my mind, one of which was I met Bing Crosby, who was a guest on the show, who looked just like my daddy, bald-headed. I met Perry Como. I met Glenn Campbell. And of course, Glenn wasn't too happy with me because we had booted him out of the good time hour. Uh, Lucia Ball, they were all on it. 
everybody was on it. And so it was a wonderful experience. And John was always one that didn't want to, all, when he was on, he was on. When he wasn't working, he wanted to hide someplace. Didn't want people to take pictures with him, but he honored me at the tail end to take a nice picture with him. And he said, thanks for being my crying towel.